Hey everybody, welcome to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler, and this is Doobie's Challenge Emmercools. And the name says it all. Doobie's Challenge, all the Emmercools, through the breaches. There's a lot going for this deck. This hand, however, is not it. We're going to mulligan. Um, this is a keeper. All right. So let's see what our opponent's on. Sorry, our opponent was typing. So he's a fan of the series. Well, uh, congrats, Ryguy. You get to be on the series. Um, may you get Emrakuled. <laughs> oh, man. This deck has so many ways to Emrakul. I love it. Oh, I love it. Uh, all right. So for those who don't know, we're playing Dubious Challenge. The way Dubious Challenge works, uh, you look at the top king cards of your library. You can reveal up to two creatures. Uh, your opponent gets one of them. They choose first, and you get the other. So... Um, you want to hit Emrakul, but then you also want to hit Flicker Wisps to flicker the Emrakul. Uh, so it comes back to your control, and you end up with both of the creatures. Uh, this is great. We can also, we can through the Breach, Emrakuls. But what this deck also has is Vizier of Remedy's Devoted Druid combo, which is both great at ramping you into uh, these two cards to get into Emrakuls, but also gives you infinite mana to cast Emrakul out of your hand, or to uh, cast him cool, the promised end, making its modern debut as well here. So uh, this is it's a pretty sweet deck. And look at that, there's a Devoted Druid. I guess we'll go ahead and scry and keep that on top anyways. All right, I'm looking for, I'm looking for, my opponent said I'm, I'm pumped to play against, uh, to play against you. And I said, you're, you're going to be pumped to play against this deck because I, I've been trying to take the challenge for a while. I've been looking for a good week to do it. And man, I am excited. Oh, our opponent's on a sweet one too. I've actually been thinking about, uh, busting this out. This is the Amulet Bloom deck, the Amulet Titan deck, um, that no longer has Summer Bloom, but is a, still a real deck. All right, so we're we're looking to do it here. Uh, if we draw land on our next turn, um, we can do Peace Challenge. Um, here comes the amulet, though, so this could get pretty ugly. Yeah, this this deck is really cool. It's a Kura Tribe Scout. Talk about cards you did not think would see modern play. I would say that uh, Dubious Challenge is one of them, but I would say that so Kura Tribe Scout's up there as well. Our opponent's also kind of going off. He's going to make a lot of mana this turn. Man, this deck was so insane with Summer Bloom. There we go. He's up to three mana. Another Ancient Serene. So this is pretty good. Uh, his first Ancient Serene's picked up the Growth Chamber. This one picks up Celestia Sanctuary. Uh, these are the, the Bounce Lands, of course, here. All right, so next turn is going to be pretty bad for us, so let's just hope we hit land. Well, we didn't hit land. Um, I'm actually going to play this. So it's it's weird, right, because um, we could play the bird and be able to do be challenge next turn. I'm actually going to play the flick. Oh, we can do this, can't we? Ooh, we can do be challenge now. Devoted to it so good, guys. Huh. So it's interesting because we, we could play Flicker Wisp, and we could exile this, and it would return. He'd actually have to pick it up, and it would really hurt him. That said, yeah, we should, we should probably just do be a challenge. It's what we're playing the deck for, after all. All right, taking the challenge on turn three on the play is what I like to see. All right, here we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, or whammies. I don't really know. It's so weird because it's, it's quite the challenge. You want to hit certain stuff, but only if you hit it with something else. As it stands, we have a... Uh... Oh, no. Oh, no. We didn't do it. Um... Okay. Well, we don't have to choose it, but we did. It was quite, it was quite dubious. We could have chosen zero, but we'll give us both devoted druids. Why not? Uh, it allows me... I guess it doesn't allow me through the breach. If I draw a land, it allows me to through the breach. Uh, unlucky, unlucky.
I mean, maybe I wasn't supposed to give this to him. This play might have been better because it, it set him back quite a bit. Um, but hey, hey, look, when you take the challenge, you you live and die by the challenge, right? We can also just draw land and win. We also just draw land and throw the bridge at Merkul and win. So the devoted druid combo really is a nice touch to this deck because you know Doobie's challenge is step one, right? Figuring out how to make Doobie's challenge work that that was easy. Figuring out through the breach is sort of the next step, and yeah, now you're putting some redundancy into the deck, but also just throwing in the infinite mana combo to cast them is like basically functions more copies of through the breach. It's pretty good. I, I like that quite a bit. Let's see how blown out we get here. He's going to make a lot of mana. We're almost certainly getting prime timed here. You know, I took a shot. Maybe I wasn't supposed to give him devoted druids. Maybe I was supposed to give nobody devoted druids. Um, but it allowed us to cast through the breach on our turn. As it turns out, we're just going to take a billion damage here for prime time. This deck is sweet. I love this Amulet Bloom deck. It's so much, it's actually fair now. It was really dumb when it had Summer Bloom and just like turn 2 you all the time. Um, but now that it's sort of a fair deck, it's actually really cool. All right, I refuse the block. It's a lot of mana. Alright, we take eight. I don't think he has any more land drops, though, so he may only be working with three mana here. He's got roughly infinite next turn, though. Conveniently enough to... Oh, no. Sad face. All right, I think we're dead here. We took our shot. We missed. And it's not the land we wanted to draw either. For what it is worth. Well, now he has Pact Negation, which is, like, really terrible for us, so... Maybe he'll Pact of Negation this. That would be good for us. And then we'd maybe have a chance. Because we're going to play the birds, so maybe we could attack with an Emrakul. The problem is attacking with Emrakul doesn't actually win. So I think we're just dead. We took the challenge. We failed the challenge miserably. He's debating. He's thinking hard about it. Yeah. This doesn't actually do anything to him, so he has no reason to counter it. All right. Well, um, think that we're dead. Let's see if he actually has a way to kill us. He's got eight on board with the um the Boros or whatever you call it, the Pump Land Slayer Stronghold. Is about Druid such a good card? Okay, uh, that that's enough for me. We're not winning by through the Reaching Ember Cool, so we may as well just let it go. Uh, all right, things that would be good here. I think Blood Moons might be pretty solid. <laughs> Our deck can play around Blood Moon pretty decently. I don't know how to sideboard with this. Like, I, Woodfall Prime is actually pretty good, too. No clue how to sideboard with this deck. I'm going to assume we can cut an Emmer Cool. A, I think the spirit guides are probably what goes. They're just ramp. One one shot ramp, which of course is very good, but Let's see where we go from here. Hornet Queen is almost tempting, um, for the fact that uh, it leaves things behind to kill the prime times, but. 
But I, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. I can't believe we whiffed so hard in that <laughs> that dubious challenge. We looked at 10 cards and we saw zero of our seven payoff cards. Even a hidden Primus there would have been great. All right, I would like to play first. And I'd like to keep this hand. That's fine. I actually don't care about this at all. Oh, yeah, I do. It, it do be challenge targets. Well, that's fine. We'll just throw the breach him. And we get a planes here. Because uh, next time we'll play Devoted Druid, then the Druid will provide the green mana. Um, the Rays of Rich Sticker will provide the red mana. Um, and when we Blood Moon. Alright, Ancient Serenes is not Sakura Tribe Scout, so that's good for us. He actually had quite the nut draw last time, right? He had the Amulet and the Sakura Tribe Scout, and double Ancient Serenes to go find stuff, and he had the Prime Time. It's actually yeah, right on time here, right? This is fine, though. Well, maybe we should play. We can't Blood Moon without this. The problem is if I got Sacred Foundry, we wouldn't have had any white mana. But we'll either draw something for it, or we'll play birds. Or we'll just, like, if we draw a red lane, we'll actually just Emmer cool him. Which would obviously be ideal. So we have lots of, basically, like, land is very good for us here. Fetch land. Oh, like a stomping ground. I guess we'll just win. All right, green mana. Untap. Green mana, red mana, that mana, that mana, that mana. Through the breach. Immercool. Attack. So it doesn't kill him, but it does remove all of his permanents, uh, including the ley line, so we can do be challenge him. And uh, we can just play Blood Moon next turn. I do love me some turn three and recruits. Okay, so here we go. Um, Blood Moon's like actually just worse than playing Glimmer Point Stag, which is kind of weird, but it is true. Just we actually just need to kill him. So I just really need this Glimmer Point Stag to do damage. The old <laughs> the Glimmer Point Stag beat down. It scars a mirrored and block all over again. Go ahead and shock myself here. Our life doesn't matter much. Just get this bird into play. Now we can Blood Moon next turn with no fear and actually have a beat down. So I think we got game two in the bag here. Weird that attacking with Emrakul allowed us to do that. This card was pretty sweet in Scars of Mirrored and Limited, but I, I have literally not even looked at it since then. Oh, we have another. How lucky. Boom, get in for three. All right, so mana. Untap. Mana. White. White. Glimmer point stag. Number two. Blink our devoted druid. Play Blood Moon. I don't think there's any way we can lose even from the spot we're at, but no reason to mess around. I mean, showing in Blood Moon, like, maybe it's bad, but I think it's ultimately fine. Like, I don't think he has any outs here, but, like, he could... I mean, that's not true. Maybe, like... And I don't know exactly what their deck plays, but I do know that there is Red Man in the deck, um, and he has Gems on mine. So it is conceivable he could play something like Anger of the Gods next turn. Uh, keep in mind, I actually have no idea what that deck plays, so I, I, I'm not sure if that's even something to consider. But, you know, may as well be safe with it. And while this doesn't necessarily keep him from doing that, it does mess with him a little bit. What does this mean? We're pacting for the prime time. You can't actually cast your primeval titan, though. No. Okay. And that is why we did it. So he just wanted to show us that he had it. Because he, 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 I don't know if he actually would have got to six mana, though. I don't think he could have. All right, well, we won game two. 
uh, game three, I actually kind of like having this again. Um, so the ways we can we can actually flicker wisp his ley line as well for what it's worth. Uh, but I think we're on the, like the infinite mana plan here. So like maybe given that's the case, we do this and we actually board out a challenge. And we just try to make infinite mana or through the breach him. I wish our deck could play, and I don't think it can, but I wish it could play like Cord or something. Um, just to make the Vizier Devoted Druid plan slightly better. But I don't think you quite have the critical mass of creatures that you need. And I would just want like two cords or something just so that you can get to five mana and go, go pick up your, your one in piece of your combo at the end of the turn. Also not sure if this deck has enough red mana in it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six fetches, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten theoretically plus four. So but only ten land sources. Okay, well this is a keep. It's not sweet, but it's at the moment, if we don't improve on draw steps, they turn four in cool. Which is it may or may not be good enough, but it's not a you're not gonna mulligan it. Your opponent doesn't have a insane draw either, which is good for us. Okay, well that doesn't help with the uh the plan of being any faster with the Emrakul. This is a magic card, though. Explore? Okay. Could be worse, I swear. Well, let's see. He's going to have a bunch of mana next turn. Okay, there we go. That's a good start. There's a big difference between turn 4 and Merkul and turn 3 and Merkul, so that was a pretty huge draw for us. Huge difference between those things, actually. Because turn 4 and Merkul could very well be too slow in this matchup, or he'd have so many lands or whatever that he still died to his prime time. Turn 3 and Merkul is probably going to be right on time to win the game. Didn't even get to take the challenge. All we did was through the breach and Merkul's. Now, we'll see how hard he actually goes off here. He does have the amulet. But I think without Sakura Tribe Scout, um, it's not going to be as bad as... Yeah, like he's going to set up for a great turn four for himself. But I don't think he's going to have a great uh, turn turn three, which is what he needs. Yeah, we just win. Well, a little anticlimactic, I guess. But whatever. For what it's worth, again, he's not actually dead. He sacrificed three lands, goes down to four. Or three permanents. And we have Flicker Wisp to try to finish him off. We also have Horizon Canopy to draw an extra card. This is Glibber Point Sag and Flicker Wisp. Turns out they're not just combo pieces with Dubious Challenge. They are uh, beatdown machines. All right, well, our opponent's a stupid spaghetti monster. I agree, man. This is not the fun way to spaghetti monster. I want a dubious challenge, not just through the breach. Uh, it turns out it is quite good, though. This is... Actually, I have lots of Emrakul decks, and the very first Mighty Modern deck I ever did more than a year ago uh, was an Emrakul deck, and it's just a deck I called the Emrakul deck, and it's all about hideaway lands, and through the breaches, and quicksilver amulets, and prime times, and summoning traps, and all these ways that you'd Emrakul to play. Um, uh, sorry, I was reading, uh, reading chat, but uh, I love I love Emrakul decks, and this is not the most fun Emrakul deck I've ever had, but it is a good one. Oh, the promised end, you say? And let's just go ahead and play this. Blinker bird. Crack the canopy at the end of his turn. He's not drawing, playing anything we cast off of it anyway, so... 
Alright, let's see if he has the ability to go off again. We don't have him dead next turn. Oh, it's a pirate. See, I was right. He does have red sweepers. Oh, this game got interesting again. It's, that's a, we have a lot of uncastable cards right now. Well, I, oh my gosh. And, and by that, I mean we have cards that don't do much. Oh, this game isn't over at all. We got pyroclasmed. And we're flooded out. It had to be all of those things, but, I mean, we had to turn three and we're cool, so I understand. <laughs> now, he's got to rebuild because he lost his amulet. He lost his bounce land and his Vesuva. Um, and we have the mana to do anything, to play anything we draw that isn't an Emrakul or a Woodfall Primus. So um, that is the downside for him here. Uh, but just even drawing another through the breach allows us to play... Oh my gosh. That is that is one of the like four cards we can't cast. Five cards, right? Because there was one other Rimmer Cool plus four of these and a Woodfall. So there were six cards on our deck we can't cast plus some lands. And we drew one. So are we going to lose? Oh, it's Azusa. Uh-oh. And Primetime's coming down next turn. And we know he has it. Oh, that's so many lands. Oh, no. All right, well, here we go. We got a big turn coming up here. <laughs> oh, live and die by the Emrakuls. <laughs> well, how much does this thing cost? What do we have, creature and land? That's not very many card types. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think we went Emrakul, land, Emrakul, Emrakul. <laughs> this is hilarious. And here comes the Primeval Titan. Oh my gosh. You live by the Spaghetti Monster. You die by the Spaghetti Monster. Uh, just for the record, this art is way cooler than this art. I would swap these. I play this card in Modern way more than I play uh, Promised In. Let's swap the arts. Oh, we're going to lose. We're going to attack with Emrakul and lose the game. That's so good. Yep, all right, Primeval Titan. All right, so the good news is we're not dead. He's going to crack us for one with the Azusa, though. Next turn, though, we're going to get wrecked pretty hard by this prime time. Now if he has Pact of Negation, he actually turns on Pact of Negation. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six. I mean, we can literally cast anything in deck, but Prime is the number cool. Um, so there were originally seven uncastable cards. There's now four uncastable cards in the deck. And lands. Oh, he's got the Azusa, so he's got it. We're getting hit this turn. No. He's down to three, though. So he's dead to a Flicker Wisp. Thankfully, the so we basically have like one turn to win the game. Um, because thankfully he does not, he's going to go get Talaria West and pick it up with the bounce land. And he, uh, but he won't have the mana to transmute for Pact of Negation. Uh, so we have, oh, actually, I got two Simic Growth Chambers. Interesting, okay. Maybe it's in his hand. I was like, we're going to have one turn to draw this here. I think, anyways. All right, here goes. Glimmer Point Stag. That doesn't really help, does it? It's, I mean, we can cast it. It is a castable card. Castable magic card. All right, well, <laughs> I think we're still dead, though. He's just going to crack on... Oh, he's got to pay four or lose the game. You think he'll choose to lose the game? So close. So close. Well, he can attack us with prime time. We have to take the damage. Uh, and then Azusa chump blocks our Glimmer Point stack, and we lose. So maybe we'll draw another Glimmer Point stack or Flicker Wisp. Or we'll take the challenge. We could take the challenge. We could also just be dead. Five Simic Growth Chambers. It's not even fair. It's cheating. Can't do that. Oh, there's a, oh it's a Summoner's Pact. Oh, we're dead. We can block here, take three and eight. Oh, we can go to one. Okay, so we're not dead. Oh, if he attacks with Azusa, we're dead. I guess he also has to have the mana to... Yeah, which he'll, well, he doesn't still doesn't have an amulet, so depends how many lands he has in hand and how many land drops he's used this turn. 
But if he gave this haste, we'd be 14 and we could block three of it and go to one if he holds back with Azusa. Uh, math would seem to suggest that he does not hold back with Azusa and chooses to kill us. Uh, but I'm not sure if he can actually make the mana for this. Depends how many lands he's played so far this turn. One, two, oh my gosh, we're dead. All right, maybe he won't attack with Azusa? This is like a sweep, by the way. Just watching his deck go off after getting Ember cooled is great. Down to two. Gosh, if we just got one attacking with our Glimmer Point or our Flicker Whisper, our, our Flicker Whisper earlier, we could have. He would not have been able to do all this. Back up. Hold up. Gotta get some white mana. Blue mana? What? Okay, white mana this time. There you go. All right, well, here we go. Let's see if he attacks with the Azusa. No, he found the line. Oh, man, I'm not even mad, though. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You live by the Emrakul. You die by the Emrakul. Oh, it, prom it was the promised end. I agree. <laughs> Good match, man. Good match. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, well, thanks for watching. <laughs>